Imagine what would happen if a country destroyed its tech industry overnight. In most cases, this would lead to economic collapse and societal chaos. Yet as you watch this video, China is doing just that. The craziest part is that the drastic actions taken by the Chinese government to dismantle their own tech industry might just save the country in the future. China has been a major player in the global tech industry since the early 2000s. However, it now seems that the Chinese government has done a full 180 and is trying to destroy all of the innovations and hard work its tech companies have engaged in over the past two decades. This seems insane, and it might just be, but many analysts believe that by cracking down on its tech sector, China might position itself to not just thrive but control many of the policies and regulations that will govern how tech companies operate around the world. Make no mistake, China is not just implementing a few regulations, they are actively destroying specific parts of their tech industry in order to force a major paradigm shift. In recent years, tech icons like Jack Ma, founder of Alibaba, have disappeared and China has leveled incredibly huge fines against some of their most lucrative tech companies. The Chinese government is not just trying to regulate certain companies in their country, they are trying to eviscerate them. So how could a government waging war on one of its biggest economic sectors be good for it? Let's pick China's policies and regulations apart and see if there's any sanity in what they're doing. It should come as no surprise that the regulations are being put in place as a way for President Xi Jinping to seize power from major tech giants. He's also using this systematic reorganization to focus the sector on what he believes the future of China should be. Before the crackdown, most of China's biggest tech companies were concentrated on software, platforms, and apps that collect user data. This data was used for advertising and selling products to consumers and is exactly what Alibaba, which is basically the Amazon of China, has been doing since the early 2000s. Chinese companies were also investing large amounts of time and resources into cryptocurrency and various social media platforms. Xi and his associates want China's tech industry to move away from these superficial sectors and focus more on physical hardware such as microprocessors, robotics, semiconductors, and electric vehicles. In order to get the ball rolling, China enacted numerous regulations that would protect user data, increase cybersecurity, and squash anti-competitive practices. This might have hurt larger tech companies in China, but it hurt foreign companies working in China that could not comply with the new regulations even more. This provided small and medium-sized Chinese tech companies an advantage in the hopes that it would lead to greater innovation. The anti-monopoly rules that China's put in place keep large tech companies from scooping up all their competitors or forcing them out of business. This has helped smaller businesses survive, while also forcing tech giants to focus their attention on the expansion outside of China. This can be beneficial for the company itself, but also spreads China's power of influence. And when it comes down to it, many of the things she is doing to destroy the tech industry are so it can be rebuilt in a way that will provide China with more power. And although the Chinese government seems to have good intentions while dismantling the tech sector, analysts worldwide are nervous about the repercussions that might arise. As China's no-COVID policy slows production and leads to more and more protests and unrest, their economy is hurt. These factors, on top of the drastic changes being made to the tech industry, which accounts for over 30% of the country's GDP, should definitely set off some internal warning bells. But China is a huge market, which means it has leverage when it comes to its foreign and economic policies. China has a massive consumer base, so most companies need to play ball with their government to tap into the country's population. This means that even though the new tech laws and regulations might be restrictive and cause foreign companies to spend large sums of money to restructure their business models and conform to the new Chinese laws, they have no choice but to comply. The new personal information protection law, data security law, and anti-monopoly rules targeting the tech industry were taken from the European Union's General Data Protection Regulation. This means that tech companies operating in Europe should also be able to adjust their practices in China and vice versa. China's made it very clear that any company that does not meet their regulations will be fined heavily or in extreme circumstances won't be allowed to operate in China. This is not an option for most tech companies that rely on the Chinese market for a decent chunk of their profits. Businesses within and outside China are now changing their procedures to ensure they don't lose access to this vital market. This is good news for Chinese tech companies because it means that everyone's playing by the same rules. These new regulations have far-reaching effects. Since tech companies are changing their practices to allow them to operate in China, it means global economic norms are shifting as well. By forcing companies to conform to China's policies, it allows Chinese tech companies easier access to the global market. Basically, China is rewriting global tech rules through the dismantling of their own tech industry. But this is not all. 
In fact, the destruction of tech companies within China through their strict regulations has greatly benefited the government in a somewhat sinister way. Even though many of the restrictions China is placing on the tech industry have to do with data collection, the government is happy to continue these practices for its own purpose. These new laws require foreign tech companies operating in China to provide more detail while simultaneously restricting them from sharing data they collect about Chinese citizens with outside parties. This is a double-edged sword for tech companies. On one hand, they need to access the Chinese consumer, but on the other, they are providing the Chinese government with a massive amount of data that might allow them to force tech companies to do their bidding. This could lead to things such as the 2016 Apple Agreement that promised the company would increase spending within China by $275 billion. Obviously, this was a huge win for the Chinese economy and the government. So although the new laws are hurting Chinese tech companies, the pros far outweigh the cons for the Chinese government. But forcing foreign companies to adhere to their strict rules is only one part of the plan. By getting rid of tech monopolies in China, the government hopes to stimulate innovation. By hurting the tech companies that have become too big, China believes more competition will arise between smaller businesses. This often leads to advances on a particular industry, which is what China hopes will happen in their technology sector. Recently, only a handful of companies have dominated the industry. Whenever a new company comes up with a good idea or creates software that's better than what already exists, they're acquired by one of those corporations. Other times, these large tech firms use more nefarious practices such as stealing intellectual property. But since they control so much of the industry, there's very little a small company can do to stop them. To be fair, this is not just a problem in China. These types of predatory practices happen all the time around the world. Companies like Amazon, Apple, and Google constantly acquire competitors and have a slew of legal actions brought against them for stolen programs or property. Unfortunately, like with all tech giants, China's companies have an army of lawyers and strategists who ensure that more often than not, what the company wants, the company gets. However, China has now stripped away the ability of large tech firms to use such tactics within the country. It will not stop these practices completely, but it will force already established companies to compete with startups to improve their own products, because if they don't, they will lose customers. When we examine China's crackdown on the tech industry more closely, it's very clear that the decisions made were calculated and deliberate. Out of all the tech companies that have been fined or ruined by China's new regulations, around 95% were software or platform companies, while only the remaining 5% were hardware businesses. This paints a clear picture of the direction in which the Chinese government wants to take its technology sector. President Xi has made it very apparent. He wants China to become more self-sufficient. He's even stated, Our dependence on core technology is the biggest hidden trouble for us. Heavy dependence on imported core technology is like building our house on top of someone else's walls. No matter how big and how beautiful it is, it won't remain standing during a storm. She knows that regardless of how powerful China's software and internet companies are, it won't matter if they can't build state-of-the-art computers or keep up with advances being made by other countries. Therefore, the main reason that such harsh regulations have been put into place to dismantle the Chinese tech industry is so the entire sector can begin pivoting toward hardware manufacturing and development while software is only relied on as a secondary product. Huge emphasis is being placed on microprocessors, robotics, and semiconductors. Xi and his advisors see this as the future, and they are likely right. Left to their own devices, the Chinese tech industry would continue mining user data and providing Chinese citizens ways to escape real life online through social media and in a future metaverse. This is because large tech companies have been doing this for years, and it's been very profitable. There's no incentive for these companies to focus on hardware when they could continue making money with online shopping, social media, and video games. But these things don't keep a country competitive in the global market, so it's clear that the destruction of China's tech companies is an attempt to force more innovation and to develop technological self-reliance for the country. Interestingly, the regulations are also being used to scare away certain companies. It might seem odd that China would want to force foreign businesses out of their market when they bring in considerable amounts of money for the economy, but like with everything else, it's all part of Xi's crazy plan. In Xi Jinping's mind, he's put China in a win-win situation. If foreign tech companies adhere to the new strict regulations, he'll have leverage over them. If they don't follow his regulations and decide to leave, Xi and his advisors believe that domestic companies will take their place. And of course, these businesses will be funded by an answer to the Chinese government. What this means is that either way, she has some form of control over all the tech companies manufacturing hardware within China's borders. Ideally, he wants the majority of hardware to be produced by state-sponsored businesses, but right now, he'll take either option. 
She and the other main players in the Chinese government have noticed how far behind the United States the country is in terms of semiconductor manufacturing, aerospace engineering, and biotech. Obviously, this is not what China wants, which is another reason for the overhaul of the tech industry. China is already a world leader in software and programming. This is why the government doesn't need to grow the industry further. Instead, they want to focus on China's shortcomings. In 2021, the Chinese government invested in all-time high in tech companies developing semiconductors and biotechnology. With all the new regulations and refocusing of the tech industry in China, other world powers have begun to take notice. Unsurprisingly, the United States is keeping a close eye on what's happening within their adversaries' borders. Even though the Chinese government's plan to destroy its tech industry might have seemed crazy at first, it now appears to be working. In February 2022, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce reported that the dismantling of China's tech industry was actually giving the country the money and talent it needed to develop an economic advantage over the U.S. It might seem unbelievable, but it would appear that China's destruction and reorganization of its tech sector is having the outcome they'd hoped for. China has doubled down on its plans, and the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology declared it would create 600 little giants in 2018. What they meant by this is that the government would back 600 startups that focused on hardware, strategic technologies, and computing equipment. They succeeded in this effort and have even expanded the number of these startups to 4,500. China plans to fund another 5,000 little giants over the next few years. The Chinese government is very serious about changing the way its tech industry operates, and as you'll see, it's not afraid of who gets hurt. Back in 2021, the Chinese government fined Alibaba $2.8 billion, the largest fine levied against a company ever. They did this by citing anti-competitive behavior perpetrated by the company. Alibaba is still operating and making profits, but this just goes to show how serious China is about restructuring its technology sector. This was not a one-off case. China has imposed huge fines on several big tech companies in the country. And although they're doing this to shift businesses toward hardware manufacturing, there's another, more sinister reason. The big tech companies gained too much power in the government's eyes. It was clear they could influence decisions made at even high levels and impact how the average Chinese citizen thought and acted. This was unacceptable to the government. As is well known, Xi does not handle threats to his power very well. The destruction of the tech giants in China is also being done to lessen their power and make sure the government is the only one controlling the general population. The government knew it was dangerous to allow non-state-run companies to have the ability to manipulate the public by collecting user data, controlling what social media and news content they saw, and providing them with online experiences they couldn't get enough of. Big tech companies overstepped, and in a country led by an authoritarian regime, threatening the government's power is never a good thing. The destruction of the tech industry was certainly motivated by the wants and needs of China to become more self-sufficient. However, it was also a play to consolidate power back to the government itself. But the government has also recognized an opportunity in the tech giants. Xi and those close to him saw how influential big tech companies had become and encouraged them to grow their user bases and footprint in other parts of the world. China's National Development and Reform Commission even released guidance on how software and platform companies could further expand their international capabilities to be competitive on the global stage. Really, what was happening was the Chinese government wanted these tech giants to stop siphoning money from the Chinese government and start bringing in more foreign money. It appears that tech companies listened to the commission and began expanding their influence beyond China's borders. In 2021, Tencent, a multimedia and video game company, extended their reach into Europe. Didi, a ride-hailing app, has a similar number of users as Uber in nine different countries. And let's not forget that TikTok is a Chinese company that beat Google as the world's most visited website for part of 2021. Once again, the Chinese government's crackdown on tech companies has done exactly what it hoped for. The rest of the world watched, stunned, as fines and regulations were thrown at Chinese tech giants by their own government. Destroying the status quo within the industry allowed them to refocus on innovation, growth, and manufacturing, while also expanding China's influence via their tech companies' products and data collection across the world. The long-term effects of these decisions appear to benefit the Chinese people as well. The law now requires companies to report data breaches, which they were previously not required to do. Also, false advertising and misleading promotions now receive much harsher penalties, which better protect Chinese consumers from being scammed. These new laws required that tech companies clean up their acts and operate more ethically. International attention has even been drawn to several Chinese tech businesses as they've made it onto lists of companies that have improved digital rights. 
Obviously, not everyone's happy about China's success after blowing up their tech industry. For years, the United States has been outcompeting China in microchip and semiconductor technologies. However, in 2021, China's Yangtze Memory Technologies created a memory chip that outperformed the most powerful chips from both Intel and Samsung. The US has opened several investigations into Chinese tech companies and their practices, but these lawsuits cannot stop them from innovating and spreading their product to other countries across the globe. As of right now, OceanBase, which Alibaba funded, is the fastest database in the world. In fact, it is twice as fast as the second quickest database, which is run by the US company Oracle. Things are not going great right now in China, but this has little to do with the way the Chinese government cracked down on the tech industry. China spends around 70 billion more dollars than the US on research and development. This allows them to turn more innovations into commercial products for their own citizens and to be shipped around the world. The growth of China's GDP has slowed, but it is still increasing by almost twice as much as the US's. By all indications, the destruction and reorganization of the Chinese tech industry will only lead to more innovations, self-reliance, and a broader influence across the world. Even with what appears to be a successful shift in the way Chinese tech companies operate, there are still some doubts that China will manage to recover fully from this transition. Many analysts still believe that the Chinese government overextended itself by implementing too many regulations and fines on their tech giants. They cite a lack of freedom for the companies to operate how they see fit as a major problem. Also, the tight restrictions could lead certain tech firms to be so bogged down with legalities they won't be able to innovate or grow. It's hard to tell what exactly is going on within China, as most information coming out of the country comes from state-run sources. However, all we need to do is look at the products we rely on every day, the software we use and the websites we visit, to see how far the arm of the Chinese tech industry reaches. In the United States, large amounts of electronics come from China. People spend enormous amounts of time on TikTok, where user data is collected and shared with other companies and the Chinese government. So much of the criticism about the restructuring of the Chinese tech industry may be coming from fear rather than unbiased opinions. If nothing else, one thing is for sure, Chinese tech companies seem to be weathering the storm and innovating in new ways to keep them relevant. Over the next several years, industry leaders and governments will need to closely watch the tech, hardware, and platforms coming out of China. The unrest and policies in the country might stifle growth, but it's being dealt with similarly to how the tech industry was. Xi and his associates are cracking down hard. It is unclear whether this will lead to more protests or if it will beat the Chinese people into submission. Although it is technically the People's Republic of China, the actual people have very little say in what happens. Xi Jinping is an authoritarian ruler and will not be giving up his powers anytime soon. This is why Chinese tech companies have to comply with the onslaught of regulations, lawsuits, and fines. That being said, the tech industry seems to be ramping back up. Strides are being made with electric cars, artificial intelligence, and semiconductors. On top of that, China is becoming more self-reliant within its tech sector and investing heavily in biotechnology. If everything continues to go as planned, China will have the most dominant tech industry in the world. These are uncertain times and initially all signs pointed to a disaster when the Chinese government destroyed its tech industry, but it's coming back with a vengeance, which means that its demolition might have been what saved it. Now watch China's plan to take over the world, or check out China's World War III plan.